Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dark Ridge Reunion, a killer party game. The game plays 6 to 12 players, takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play, and is an indoor activity game for most ages. And in the game, you're going to be basically inviting people over for a murder mystery dinner party. And in this game, you are going to basically be uh, separating people into three different groups. You have the jocks and the geeks and the rebels, and you're going to organize them based on the players that come in. One player is going to play as the deadly slasher with the deadly uh, light turns on, but you can't see it during it right now, but uh, deadly slasher to kill the players, and another player plays the sheriff, and then there's an ensemble of different roles and characters in the cast. You're going to gather your cards, your objectives, and of course your hidden artifact, and you're going to have three stages of play, and you'll move throughout all those stages until the end of the game, in which case whoever's left alive is going to be on a team of their specific types, and then the ghosts will be on their own team, which will also play the game, and whoever has the most points in one of those teams is the winner of the game, Dark Ridge Reunion. Union. Are you ready to jump in? Let's go ahead and take a look at how to set up and of course how to play and then what I think of the game. To begin the game of Dark Ridge Reunion, it's very simple. Before everybody shows up, go ahead and determine the number of players and then based on that number, divvy out the different roles to each of the players and give them an idea of what to dress up as. The jocks and the nerds and the rebels and each of the name cards are going to have a specific color lanyard that you can use to identify what team you're going to be on. After that, each player is going to look at the back of a lanyard and take and choose one of the three options or objectives or goals throughout the game that they'll need to accomplish. Then give each player a special secret mission. There are a ton of different secret missions in the game, and if you're playing with eight players, you're going to go ahead and shuffle up the deck minus the slasher and the sheriff, and then deal out a number of cards minus two. Then go ahead and add the sheriff and slasher to the mix, and you should have cards equal to the number of players. Then shuffle those cards up and deal one to each player, and then they will look at that. That will be their objectives throughout the game in the different acts of the game, and they can go ahead and hide that card underneath uh, in the back of their lanyards so that nobody else can see what they are. If you want to play the more advanced mode, which I recommend, you're going to go ahead and take out the artifacts. You'll shuffle these guys up, and then you're going to deal out two to each player. Those players are then going to select one of those cards, put it into the lanyard as well, and discard the rest in the bottom of the artifact deck, placing it into the bag where you're going to have artifacts so that nobody can see the front or back of the artifact cards. Then you are ready to go, and the game is going to have three phases, which I will explain now. Phase one is the introductory stage. It's about 20 minutes, and the first thing everybody is going to do is sit around a table, put the dagger in the middle of the table, everyone closes their eyes, and then just the slasher will wake up. Take that dagger and hide it somewhere in their person so that nobody knows they are the slasher. Then everyone will open their eyes, including the slasher, and you will begin the game. People will walk around the rooms, introducing themselves, talking about their stories, maybe using the beginning of a secret objective to kind of get the ball rolling, but you can never complete or start an objective during this phase. It's mainly to introduce each other and utilize, I think there's certain cards that will represent like, uh, you can do certain things at the very, very beginning of a secret mission that will allow you to uh, successfully accomplish your goals in the coming acts. After about 20 minutes or so, that act or phase introduction is going to be over and the next phase will begin, which is where all the fun begins. Phase two is the action phase, which takes place about 30 to 50 minutes throughout the game. So 20 minutes introduction, and then 30 to 50 minutes is where you do the actions. And actions are fun. In the game, I suggest you have the largest location possible with the most rooms possible as well. At least if you're playing with six players, you're going to want to have three specific separate rooms. With each new set of players, it's encouraged to have an extra location available so that they can go in private to talk. Because a lot of the objectives require you to be in individually with somebody else to discuss something. Maybe you want to ask the players, hey, do you think I'd be a star later? Or what do you think about my invention? Or is my idea of a movie very good? And you're trying to convince them to achieve a certain goal. All of these cards have unique missions. Like for instance, if I was dealing with the matchmaker, um, you believe two characters here belong together. Choose two players from different teams and different from yours, and choose a mission to do so before, uh, before act one. St uh, stoke their love through cooperation and get them to trade artifacts. Or get them to hold hands and take a photo of them doing so. Get one of them to propose marriage to the other. And so you kind of encourage to do 
certain missions uh, that are separate from your main goal as you progress throughout the game. And then of course you have the slasher and the sheriff. The slasher is basically going to go around with their knife hidden and secretly pull it out when the time comes secretly, and stab. And of course, you have to have the light on, that's part of the rules uh, for when you do the, the stabbing. And then, of course, you hide the knife back and turn people into ghosts. And, of course, ghosts have their own missions as well when playing with the advanced mode, which I strongly, strongly encourage. When you die in this game, whether by slasher or by someone else, you're going to go to the table and select a ghost objective. And if you can do so before anyone realizing you died, which is super important and will ruin the game if you do not do so otherwise, and take one of these things, uh, then you can start progressively doing the ghost objectives. And you'll get points for making sure nobody notices that you passed away. If you're in a group with Steven, and Steven happens to be the slasher and removes you from the game with his well-lit knife, and you head to the table and grab a ghost objective right thereafter, people are probably going to know it is Steven who is the slasher, and thusly you're not going to get the points for how you do it. But of course, Steven can be hidden by having a murderous artifact that they show you or something else in the game. But that's why your objective is so important as a ghost to go ahead and secretly maybe waddle around for a little bit. A ghost can only speak in whispers and are kind of silent throughout the entire game. Um, so they have to have a pretty challenging job of grabbing these guys here. And uh, all the while, throughout this, this specific act of the game, you are trying to do whatever your objective says it, has, says it needs to do. And of course, usually working with your team in some way. Then, and only then, 30 to 50 minutes into the game, you're going to transition to the last and final phase of the game before scoring. In the finale, which is the third act, and only available when you're playing the advanced mode, which again, I strongly encourage you do, is about 20 minutes, and your objective becomes to accomplish whatever your missions are. There's certain things you can and cannot do in this specific act, like you're not able to utilize your, your, your dagger as a slasher, so there's no more slashing of the people with this, but you are able to use secondary objectives and do certain things that will affect gameplay, uh, trying to get players to say certain things or do certain things to score you points, because the entire game is kind of a mix of a deception game along with a social game and, and uh, it's all kind of tied into one. If you've ever played Werewolf or Mafia and also like something more like Resistance meets a dinner party, this is kind of what that entails. And you're attaching different rooms and unique conversations that you're having around the house. This phase is also only about 20 minutes similar to the introduction phase and players will do what they can to accomplish their goal. And then after that, the game is going to reach a conclusion. You'll check to see who's alive, and then each of those specific teams are going to score points based on the objectives that they have completed. Like, for instance, uh, this Josie King, who's a geek, is a struggling actor, and they have specific things that they need to do and how they're going to need to connect in order to score points, which it tells you on your lanyard. It will tell you in your secret admission how many points you get for what you do. And then, of course, if you're a ghost, you will get points with the ghost team based on if you can do the specific things it asks. Wander around the game space whispering the word murder over and over again for five minutes and if you accomplish this put it aside and gather a new one and you can do that up to about three times if you're successful with each of them and so yes each of these uh, specific things that you're asked to do are going to score you points you're going to tally them up with your team and then whoever has the most points at the end is the winner of the game dark ridge reunion you can play this game multiple times over and over again even in the same night if you'd like you can switch characters up if you'd like or if you brought different clothing or you just simply want to stick with the same characters you can do that as as well. And then, of course, that's basically the idea of the game. Scoring those points, attempting to do the best you possibly can, murder those people, or if you're the sheriff, maybe you want to find or outwit the killer himself, and then hide yourself as the killer with other players who have unique specific artifacts that affect them or other players throughout the game, such as like maybe a poison apple, where it works just like the knife, but it's only going to work once, and maybe it's going to affect an objective that you need to in order to, in order to complete. And you're always, of course, going for the other teams. Anyway, that's the game. Let's talk about my review. So Dark Ridge Reunion harkens back to an older era in which you're going to be playing a murder mystery dinner, but instead of just going out of your way to have dinner with people and like talk and walk around rooms and whatnot, try and discover the mystery and story, this adds a more gameplay element to it. You are going to, what I would suggest at least, invite people beforehand, make sure that they have the opportunity to learn their characters if they want to roleplay, if they don't want to roleplay. It's kind of very, very
very optional in this game. You can gamify it as much as you want, introduce as much of that like make-believe as you would like, or stick specifically to just the style of game, completing your objectives, and moving through the game. It's great, which allows a lot of players to kind of be in it as much as they really want to be, or just play the game specifically for the game's sake as much as they'd like to be as well. Throw out snacks and include them all around the different rooms of the house um, so that players are going to be encouraged to go and secretly complete their objectives and maybe run into a new player along the way. There could be some running and screaming in this game as well. When you go into a room with a person, maybe the slasher, he has to tap you with that knife. If you see that knife, before they tap you, you can kind of run away. <laughs> that introduces some crazy shenanigans as well. Knowing who the slasher is isn't going to end the game. It isn't going to make the game just be one and done because there's multiple objectives going on. And yes, he's a big part of the game, but so is the sheriff. And so is the person who's trying to love match two people together. Or you have this character here who's a doctor who scores different points based on getting people to believe in their maybe specific type of vanity that they have. And so it's all about each of the individual characters. And they all have their own specific roles and how they function in getting specific things. And when you introduce the advanced mode of the game, which is also highly encouraged, uh, that adds on the ghosts, which means that you're no longer involving player elimination. Because I don't like player elimination, I would never add it into a game if I do not have to add it into a game, and I only don't mind it if it's something that will end the game very shortly thereafter. If I lose and I only have to wait five minutes, I'm okay with that. If I'm waiting an hour, no deal. And this is potentially, in that case, I'm not playing the advanced mode, a way in which you can lose and have to wait 30 or 40 minutes to play the game again. Throw in the ghosts, there's no reason not to. And it all allows them to kind of interact in the game in a very weird and funny way as well. This game is, of course, less horror and more humor, and of course adds a twist of, like, deduction and deception along the way. And yes, you do feel weird walking into a room with another player because you have your own goals, and they do as well. But is it mainly a social goal, or are you just attempting to slide that little knife up into their, like, gut? Or maybe you're trying to pass them a poison apple. It always worries them when you want to work with somebody on a different opposing team. But you're also kind of forced to do that with all the different objectives that are available to you. And all the secret admission, missions that uh, require you to accomplish them, because they require you to actually visit other teammates and, of course, other people not on your team as well. And that's the idea of the game. This is a murder mystery dinner party without the dinner, with more of a snack theme introduced with up to 12 players and kind of letting you go into different rooms of the house to interact with other players, finding out that players have passed on, as opposed to them just lying dead in the specific place where they died, which I was not a, never a big fan of because it's very easy to find the killer in that way. They have to do their best to secretly get to the ghost card before people realize they're a ghost, thusly allowing the killer to slip in to um, an anonym anonymity, right? An an anonymity, that's it, that's the word, which is really fun. All right, and that's the gameplay. I'm, I'm very, very sold on this type of a dinner party. Um, or snack party. <laughs> this is the knife. It's cute. It works well. I wish the light was a bit brighter because it's harder to see even in, you know, during in a dimly lit room. Uh, it could be a stronger lit light, but it's cute and it's high quality, right? So, I mean, for, for a, a knife that you're just going to kind of... Oh, and the lanyards. The lanyards here are really nice. High quality lanyards with the nice little tassels here that you're going to be utilizing throughout the game and having to wear. And if you're going to have to wear this throughout the entire game, it might as well feel comfortable. And it does. And it has nice big wording that allows you to have options and choice. And the game is full of choice. Super, super great. Artwork is solid. Exactly what you need for the game specifically. Uh, it would be nice probably to see the characters themselves as opposed to kind of what their objective is. But I'm not going to give it too bad of a thing about that because I don't really care enough. It's not, that's not the point of the game. Um, these secret missions are super fun. It's always interesting to see what you're going to have to be, what you're going to have to do, and how you're always going to include the sheriff and the slasher. That's a nice addition to, I want to see these characters in the game. And most of the time I want to be one of these two, but it is fun to not have to always be them and do something unique and different and still feel part of the game. I don't have to feel like I'm either the bad guy or I'm just a red shirt walking around the house hoping that I do not die and make it to the end of the game. And the ghost objectives are super fun. This is a really cool addition to the game. I like the fact that there's no player elimination. That makes this game more replayable and keeps people to want to play the game again even on the same night. Artifact cards are a nice twist as well, utilizing these one-shot abilities that twist the game up, that hides the killer, that also makes you uh, assume things that normally you wouldn't assume 
assume in a murder mystery game adds that element as well. For those of you who want to play a murder mystery but do not like the idea of players being out of it or no longer being able to play the game, if you want something that's a little bit more strategic in the ways of gameplay, utilizing your secret admissions to have to do something, but not just one, but multiple of them throughout the entire night, this is going to be a solid choice for you. The box is nice, um, has a nice way to fit everything back into it. The rules are very self-explanatory and I understood how to play the game as I went through it. It took me about 10 to 15 minutes to do so. And even if you didn't, there's a nice QR code with a little piece here that explains what you need to do if you don't like reading the rules. Remember your group photo at the end, I guess, if you would like. I think that's a nice little advertisement for the marketing for the game. And of course, everything is high quality as far as that goes. So there's not a huge amount of stuff you're going to get throughout the game that you're going to need, and most of it's going to fit in your lanyard, but it gives you all of the basic materials to play a great dinner party slash snack party game. Yes, I recommend Dark Ridge Reunion if it's something you'd like. If you're interested in one of these type of games, you'll enjoy it. If you don't like to RP, yes, you don't have to do so, but I think it removes part of the game because you're not playing the character you need to be in. Would I suggest at least kind of trying to get into it? If you have friends that are not even gonna want to jump in and try their best to feel like they are their character, I wouldn't recommend this game because yes, some people enjoy it, but others won't just because some people are going to be butted out of the game. And if that's the case, then it kind of leaves a sour taste in the mouths of some people who want to do a specific thing and aren't being allowed to because other players aren't into it. You need to have a group of people who all want to be into the game and enjoy the game for what it is, regardless of whether it's everybody RPing or nobody doing so. Uh, and I guess another reaction to the game is you still have to be careful with the ghosts. If the ghosts doesn't make it back to a room, or they don't play as the game is supposed to be played, it can mess things up. It functions a lot like those other murder mysteries in which you people have to play the game as it's meant to be played. And if they do not, there's a potential for a mess up and it leaves a lot to be desired. Even though it's not the game's fault, it's just a thing that can happen in these games. That being said, make the choice for yourself down below if you'd like to pick up the game Dark Ridge Reunion. And that's pretty much what I gotta say about it. It is approved. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dark Ridge Reunion. Like I said before, there's a link down in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game. You can also go ahead and check out our channel, YouTube, and go ahead and subscribe there if you'd like. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button as well. Like this video, share this video, and if you want, go ahead and jump on the website unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more for you to go ahead and check out more games just like this one. My fan, I think the last game we played was called a, a Murder Most Foul, which was also a dinner party game and a book, as opposed to this one, which has a ton more uh, components that you're going to be adding, as opposed to uh, something you create yourself utilizing instructions and if you'd like you can also go ahead and jump on our live streams every sunday 6 30 p.m pst where we play games not very much similar to this one i've never done a murder mystery live stream although it would be fun if i had a cameraman that kind of went around to each of the rooms and did that but i do not know how i'd be able to accomplish that feet without some serious, serious money spent and workarounds, but it would be cool. And it's every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We play board games on the channel. You can watch us play new and interesting games that are going to be currently found on Kickstarter. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to slashing you next time. <laughs>